Hello my lovely friend and welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for being here. For those that are new, my name is Mel and I am a medium and an energy healer. I love to create videos about spirituality and I hope that you do consider joining. In today's video, I'm going to be going over a question I received from one of you lovely viewers about astral projection, what it is and how you can do it. Now this person did ask me this a few months ago, but I don't like to jump into something that I don't myself experience and so I have been taking this time to read books to practice astral projection so that I can give you an in-depth real view of what it is and how to do it so I will be showing you some books that I really enjoyed and some techniques that I have used to astral project so stay tuned <music> What is astral projection? This is where you have, in essence, a part of your soul that leaves your body so that you can go to another place. This place that you can go to can be anywhere, another planet, another galaxy, another city. You could even go into your kitchen if you wanted to. You can astral project part of your soul anywhere in the world, the universe, the cosmos that you want to see and explore. So I have been doing a lot of research about this over the last few months since I received this question. Thank you so much. If you guys have any other questions about anything at all, make sure to leave them in the comments and I will make a video about it. So first things first, I was really nervous about it because I was afraid that without my physical body, how would I protect myself? What if I came across something that I wasn't familiar with or something that frightened me or tried to hurt me? So this was a huge hindrance for me when I first started. I was really afraid to let go of part of my soul to send it somewhere else because I was so worried about other aspects, other things that could potentially happen. Now the books that I have read gave me great ideas for protection and what to do. But I also sat back and thought about my own self and my own practices. If you guys have followed me for a while, you'll know that I say that I don't do protection work when I'm working with spirit. I don't sit there and hold on to the fear of needing protection. For me, the fear of needing it brings it to me and I don't want that. So when I'm doing my spiritual work, my readings, I know that I am the light. I work in the light, I work for the light, I am protected by the light. And so I don't do a bunch of protection rituals when I'm doing mediumship or any of my other spiritual readings where I am connecting to other entities, other aspects of different people, different forms, let's say angels or your spirit guides or your higher self. Like I don't sit and do any form of protection work because I am solid in my foundation that nothing will get through me, nothing will penetrate me. I am the light. I am protected in and by the light. But for whatever reason, when I was working on astral projection, I was more nervous because I didn't have a physical body that could be there to protect me. So I do want to say the very first thing, if you are going to do astral protection, you need to make sure that you are secure. If you're doing it in a state of sadness, in a state of depression, in a state of unsureness, that's not a word, but you know what I'm saying, I believe that you are going to be more susceptible to things coming towards you that might bring fear to you, that might make you afraid. So first and foremost, I would suggest never ever doing astral projection, one, if you're not in a stable and happy emotional place, but two, without reading and researching what you are doing and how to protect yourself first. Please do not take this video and start astral projecting without doing your own research and without making sure that you are firm in your protection before you start and firm in knowing how to protect yourself once you are out in the astral world. So with that said, after I read some books and I meditated a little bit and got some guidance from my own spirit guides, I knew I was ready to start. So the first thing that I want to tell you is that as far as protection, I would say prayers before I would start my astral projection. Please spirit guides or God or however you prefer to pray 
please protect me and all of my astral body as I go on this journey. And for me, that really solidified for me that there was nothing to fear. When you call in God, when you call in your spirit guides, when you call in your angels and your team, they are there with you every step of the way. Just trust and know and believe that they are there because they are. And that for me really helped me get out of that mode of fear to be able to move forward with astral projection. So the next step is how do you do it? So I use many different techniques over the last few months because I wanted to find ways that worked best for me. In the books that I'm going to show you at the end of this video, they do give you different ways that you can astral project. But again, if you followed my channel, you'll know that I always say, don't do what I do because that's what I say. Take what I say and make it your own. Take what I say and make it work for you to where it feels best. So I took the last few months to try many different ways to see which one worked best for me. So I'm going to go over some of those techniques now and I want you to find the ones that work best for you and of course tweak them to make them more comfortable, to make them more approachable for you. So one of the techniques in one of the books I'm going to share with you is called a rope technique where you lay down or you can sit. I prefer to lay down when I astral project. I feel like it makes my body a lot more relaxed. So I do like to lay down. But if you're somebody that would fall asleep, maybe try sitting up at first. But you can use a visualization technique called the rope technique where you imagine your body climbing a rope out of your physical body and therefore your astral body has now been released out of your body and can travel wherever it wants to or wherever you're projecting it too. So I really loved that technique. It really worked very well for me because I was nervous about how to do it. And I also tried just laying there and seeing what would happen. I would lay there with the intention of my astral body coming out. In the beginning, that did not work for me but it might work for you so this is the second tip you can use is to just allow your body to lay there and get relaxed with the intention that when your body's ready and when your astral body is ready you can come out and move forward this did not work for me in the beginning but it does now because i've been working on astral projecting i think my body and my astral body knows what to expect now so all i have to do is set the intention and i can just go but I really did need the rope technique at first. Another technique that you can use is through visualization, again, is imagining your astral body just coming up, sitting up, and then standing up, and then walking towards a portal or a wormhole, if you want to call it a vortex, to where it is you want to astral project to. I really liked this one too, visualizing my body kind of taking its time, getting comfortable coming out. And at the same time, as I was visualizing that, it's like my body was relaxing more and more because I was giving my astral body time to prepare. I wasn't rushing it out of my physical body. And so that one really worked for me in two ways, allowing my astral body to come out so I could astral project, but also relaxing me and my body. Now, there's many, many, many other ways that you can use to astral project, but those three ways were really great for me, especially the one where I just laid there and set the intention. That worked for me afterwards, but now it works so well. I can just lay there and say, okay, I want to astral project tonight, or I want to astral project here or there, and my body is used to doing it from all of the studying I've been doing for you guys on this subject, and I can just get up and go. But whatever you need to get to that point, Find a way that works for you, that is comfortable, that allows you to feel secure in yourself and secure in what you're doing. That way you can start the astral projection process. Okay, so we've set our protection prayer. We're ready to go. Our astral body has come out. What do we do next? Where do we go? How do we go? So when you astral project, you can go anywhere. The world, the universe, the cosmos are unlimited and vast. So if you can dream it, if you can imagine it, you can go there. Do you want to go to Saturn to explore it? Go. You can project your astral body there that quickly, even faster than this.
Do you want to go to your Akashic Records, for example, and read about your soul and the journey of your soul? Do you want to go to your Akashic Records to know why do these things keep happening in my life? Why do these patterns keep repeating? You can go astral project to your Akashic Records. Do you want to go into your kitchen and see what groceries you have? I'm just saying something random because you can do that too. If you want to just practice astral projecting in the safety of your own home at first, do that. Get yourself comfortable. Astral project into your kitchen. Astral project into your living room. Now, I don't want you to spy on anybody that is completely unethical. Please do not astral project somewhere to spy on somebody, to read their private words or anything that they've written down. Please don't do that. That is completely unethical. But if you want to go into your living room and walk around, if you want to go into your dining room and walk around in the protection and privacy of your own home, just to get yourself secure with it, do that. You can go anywhere in the world that you want to go. Do you want to astral project into heaven, we'll call it. Um, I say we'll call it because there is not really heaven. The spirit world is all around us all the time, omnipresent. There's no up in heaven, but the word heaven has a really deep meaning for a lot of people. So if you want to go to heaven to connect to a family member that has passed away, you can do that too. Now you're going to ask me, how do I do that? Where do, how do I get myself set to go there? You would use your intention. So as I've said through a lot of my videos, in anything that you do, your intention is what matters. Your intention is what gets you to where you want to be. So before you would lay down to get ready to astral project, you would say your prayer, lay down, get yourself comfortable, set the intention of where you want to go, and then you're going to start your astral projection process of getting your astral body out and ready to go. Once you set that intention, trust and believe that that is where you will go. You might see things, you might know things, you might feel things. Everybody's going to have a different experience astral projecting. But the most important thing I want to say is set the protection first so that you are secure and that you're not worried. Will you come across things that are scary or things that are not necessarily what you would ever imagine being? Yes, I have come across scary things astral projecting. Was I scared? No. Um, only because I, again, set myself firm that I am the light and I am of the light and nothing can penetrate that without my permission and without getting past God because I pray to God for my protection. But yes, I have run into things that have scared me. I have seen things that are scary and things that would make a normal person completely freak out and bust out of their astral projection back into their body. So you may come across things like that. That's why I suggest practicing in the privacy of your own home at first and getting yourself secure in what you're doing. So you can go anywhere. If your mind can conceive it, if your mind can think of it, you can astral project there. So how do we get back to our bodies when we're ready? And how do we make sure that we don't snap back in when we're not ready? When I was first starting this process of researching astral projecting and, and doing astral projecting, I would keep getting pulled back into my body quickly because I wasn't prepared and I hadn't done the time I needed to understand how to keep my astral body out wherever I had it going. And anything can immediately pull you back. So laughter from outside by your neighbors, that one got me a lot because I live somewhere where the houses are like right on top of each other. So uh, one night my neighbor sneezed, pulled me right back in. Another night the neighbors over here started laughing, having a party outside, pulled me right back in. The key here is going to be practice and understanding how you work. Um, obviously, you can't stop your neighbors from making noise. You can't stop your dogs from making noise. But you can practice enough to where you can tune those things out. I have been researching astral projection for a few months because I wanted to bring you an in-depth, honest video. And at the time that I got the request from my lovely viewer, I didn't really know so much about it. I had astral projected to Andromeda randomly. I hadn't even meant to do it. And so that's how the question came up and I wanted to research. But when I first started astral projecting, I would be pulled back in like that.
If my dog started barking, pulled back in immediately. If the air in my home kicked on, pulled back in immediately. But I realized over time and with a lot of practice, I was able to hold myself out into that astral projection without allowing the world around me to affect me. Something else that one of my spirit guides gave me is to put a protection bubble around you, a protection from sound or distractions. So when you lay down after you've said your prayer, you can envision like a white dome or bubble going over you and around you to also give you protection, but to also keep the sound out. That worked so well for me. So I wanna share that with you. I want you to try that. But I will let you know that the more that you practice this, the more you're gonna build that muscle, the stronger you're gonna get and you're going to be able to focus more and not allow the outside world to pull you back in. But when you're ready to come back in, when you're ready to come back to your body, you just say it and you're there. You just say, okay, I'm ready or I wanna be in my body or I'm done. Boom, you are right back in your body. Now you could be 10 galaxies over, a million galaxies over in your astral body. The moment you say I'm done or whatever phrase you wanna use, back in the body, I'm done, I'm through, the end, you are immediately back in your body. There's no lag time of waiting to come back, you're immediately back. Something else that I have researched and read is that a lot of people were nervous that if you're sending your astral body, your spirit out, how do you stay alive? Through the books that I have read, which I'm gonna share with you in a moment, and through the research that I have done online, our spirit, our bodies, and the universe and God in general is so incredibly smart and intuitive. Like everything works so perfectly, far, far away from what we could actually understand in our human brain, but there is a piece of your soul, call it a cord if you will, that is always there and always attached to your body. So you don't have to be afraid to astral project and then your entire spirit leaves. If your spirit leaves your body, that's death. Your, your physical body dies. That's not astral projection. You're projecting a, a big portion of yourself out somewhere, but another strong, confident, very intelligent portion, a cord again, if you will, is still connected to you and to that astral body. Your spirit is not going to permanently leave your body. Again, that's death, but that's not what astral projection is. So you don't have to be afraid of that either. The world and God is so infinitely smart that everything is connected in a way that protects us as well and keeps us secure in this body. So I want to share with you the two books that I personally really loved about astral projection and they are right here. So we have Astral Projection for Beginners by Lisa Amando. I absolutely love this book. Now for me, I like to have the physical book because I put lots of highlights, lots of stickers in my books. So I like to have the physical book, but you don't have to. Both of these are avail available on Amazon in ebook format and physical format. And then this other one, Astral Projection, Out of Body Experience by Denning and Phillips. This one, I would say if you had to choose between the two, I really enjoyed this one the most. But both of these books tell you how to do it, why you would be doing it, how to protect yourself, how to bring yourself back. Everything I've talked about in this video, these two books are really going to help you. But again, if you only can get one, this is the one that I recommend absolutely the most to anybody that's asking about it. Um, I do want to say thank you so much to my viewer who asked me about this. Because of you, I've been doing all of this research. It's been amazing. It's been so fun. Um, the places you can go and the things that you can see and the things that you can learn, even about yourself, are so amazing with this process. But again, please make sure you're protected. Please make sure you're ready before you start. And please make sure you know what you're doing. Read and research before you try to begin an astral projection process. As always, my lovely friends, if there's any questions that you have, whether it be about this video or anything spirituality, leave it in the comments. I'm happy to make another video. I'll see you in the next one. Bye now.